This attack begins with a brute force attempt from the AWS console. The attacker tries different passwords for the EC2 low priv IM username. And in the end, they were successful and logged in with a low privilege user with no programmatic access or IM, only console access. The attacker goes to EC2 and then goes to AMI, which stands for Amazon Machine Image. This is a master image for creation of EC2 instances. They will look at an RDS Connect because, based on the name, this AMI is related to a database, so they will choose to launch this one. Now, the attacker wants to be quiet about this action, so they won't create a new key pair to launch this instance. Instead, they will use user data and will insert a payload into the user data. When you launch an instance in AWS EC2, you have the option of passing user data to the instance that can be used to perform common automated configuration tasks and even run scripts after the instance starts. So the attacker will upload the file shell.txt that contains the payload. So when this EC2 instance is running, it will run that payload they just inserted into the user data. This will create a reverse shell to the attacker's machine, where they will set up a listener. So you see, they chose without a key pair and now launched the instance. Now the attacker is setting up a listener on their own machine that will be listening on port 4444 and waiting until the EC2 opens a connection to this listener machine. At this point, the attacker has a reverse shell to the EC2 instance. The whoami command shows they have root privileges. Now remember, the AMI had RDS Connect in the name, so the machine has access to a database. AWS recommends database login info be put in a file called dbinfo.inc. This is what the attacker will look for first. When they find it and cat the file, you can see all of the credentials needed to access the database. The command mysql dump will dump the entire database contents to the attacker's local Kali machine. The attacker connects to the database and logs in with the credentials they stole from the DB info file. The attacker will then do a grep for admin, and you can see there are more credentials they stole from this database. There is admin, dev, and more. So the attacker was successful in their attack. They managed to get sensitive content from the database they can use in further attacks. First of all, we have an informational alert for successful login without MFA. And then we will look at an alert for console login from a new geolocation. If we inspect this and go to the logs, we can see that the login was from France. The next alert is suspicious EC2 launch without a key pair. This is a known technique for attackers to get a reverse shell on EC2 instances. And if an attacker does this, they are able to escalate privileges as shown in the attack segment where they started without access to the database and then gained the credentials to do so. And here we see that the run instance call was actually made. The last alert we will go over here is anomaly detection of anomalous network traffic. This uses machine learning capabilities to build a baseline of normal behaviors and will alert on any deviations from this baseline. When I inspect, I see the database communicating with the instance the attacker spun up. If I isolate the node and go into the logs, we can clearly see the outward communication that was the exfiltration. 10.0.0.49 was the IP of the reverse shell, and under bytes, you can see the amount of data that was actually exfiltrated. To learn more about Checkpoint Cloud Guard intelligence and threat hunting, visit the link below.